deciding with what consultants to use and, and sticking with the instinct that the consultant they've picked is the right one for the job. Not to say that you know you can't make mistakes, but it's a competitive world out there. And I think that often they will look at your progress and, you, and what you've helped them achieve and then at any moment they could decide that you're not the one. So it's a bit cutthroat. The difficulty they have is, is making that selection. And uh, I like to think that the better relationship you have with the client, the more you kind of reassure them that they've made the right choice. With biomediation, we've got a bit of a, a proven track record of using some known donors that are a bit more cost effective, which has overall seen a uh, reduced mass contaminant flux over time within the targets that an audit team or, or even the EPA has somewhat stipulated. We encompass a lot more responsibility along the way. So that goes for the, the baseline conditions, the great care when we're actually doing the injections, uh, and then also the, the post-monitoring assessment to see just exactly how things are tracking over time. With groundwater contamination, it's better than extracting groundwater to treat it and put it back in, uh, to pump and treat, very costly. Uh, we like to do things a bit less intensive and longer term, so that would be finding the contaminant issue and then trying to speed up that process of the degradation in the actual in situ in, in the groundwater. So a lot of that is to promote microbial growth and particularly microbes that actually eat the contamination in question. Uh, and then you're left with a reduced overall contaminant plume.